Now we're ready to do the first activity, and this is one you have to think through very carefully before you begin. So I've already got the spectrophotometer set, and I have blanked it. The other thing I have set is a tube that has some of the DCIP solution in it that we're going to use to detect uh, the presence of, the, of electrons. Now, you can see this tube fits inside this little cassette here. This is going to be important because when we're ready to go, I have my uh, light bulb here, and I'm going to hold this right up against the light bulb, and this is going to establish the right distance between the tube and the light to give me the reaction uh, that I need. The last thing I've got is my chloroplast dilution ready to go. So now that everything's set, I can take my blank out. I'm going to add half a mil of my chloroplast dilution to this. Quickly, I'm going to uh, wipe this off and get my initial spectrophotometer reading. And once that's been done, I'm going to take it off, cover it over, put it in the cassette, and then hold it right up against the light. And now I'm going to wait for one minute. Okay, one minute's almost up. So I'm going to take this down, pick it up, mix it quickly, wipe off any fingerprints, and get a spectrophotometer reading. You have to, don't wait for this to stop because it's going to be changing as it goes. Once you have the spec reading, this goes back in the chamber and back up at the light for another minute. And you're going to take readings every minute for 10 minutes. So now you've finished taking readings with the spectrophotometer every minute for 10 minutes, and you've recorded those in your lab notebook. Now you need to graph those values. And we provide a graph for you, but it doesn't have the y-axis labeled. You need to look at your numbers and figure out what's going to make the most sense for labeling your y-axis. So when that's done, you go ahead and you plot out your graph. All right, now to figure out the standard reaction time, what you're more or less going to be calculating is how long it took for about half of the DCIP in your sample to become reduced. And that's going to be a function of your highest absorbance reading and your lowest absorbance reading. And we're not going to go through all the calculations here, they're in your lab manual. But more or less, you're going to figure out the midpoint between those, and then draw over from the y-axis till it intersects your curve, and then draw down, and that's going to give you your standard reaction time. In the case of my sample, it's been about four minutes. So for all the remaining activities, I just need to put my chlorophyll sample in the light for four minutes, and then take my final reading. So now you've extracted chloroplast and you've figured out the standard reaction time for your sample. Now it's time to test the activity of that sample in different colored lights. You'll do white and black, of course, but in addition you'll also do red, yellow, green, and blue light. Another thing that you'll be testing is the effect of DCMU. DCMU is another electron stealer, just like the DCIP, and you're going to see how it affects the, the uh, ability to detect those electrons moving. And finally, this whole thing gets a lot easier at this point, because now when you put uh, your chloroplast uh, solution and your DCIP into this little box, you don't have to hold it there in front of the light for 10 minutes. You only have to hold it there for the standard reaction time. Whatever you calculated for your sample, that's as long as you need to wait.